All right, so the next game is against Matuta from Argentina. And I read a comment that um, 100 Endgames You Must Know doesn't sound like a book. Um, are we going to play the exact same variation? Well, I'm going to deviate. Trust me. Ah, okay, he's going to deviate. 100 Endgames You Should Know doesn't sound like a book GMs would refer to and um, yes of course a lot of the end games are already new but it is really good to re review the, them and what I liked about the book is the concept to look at the most common ones because this is the most important right and uh, to really spend the time on that and I just like the approach like the writing style of Je Jesus 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 de la de la Via, and um, just really enjoyed this book. So, if you want to get started on endgames, this is a good place to begin, I would say. Queen d7 is actually not that rare anymore, I would say. Um, playing the queen back to d7. So. This all has been seen in many games before. And black still needs to finish development. Bishop d7, he did not play. So I have different moves. Bishop g3, knight e5. Mm. I think knight e5 could be smart. Because here I have knight d7. With the idea knight takes d7, I can take the bishop on e7. I have the bishop pair. Which is nice. Oh, also there was maybe knight takes f7. But I'm playing rather quickly, so I didn't look at this. Knight takes f7 is also a very common idea to sacrifice and then go queen takes e6. Not sure if it would have worked, maybe. But um, definitely useful to take a look. And maybe even later I can go bishop takes e6. Right now I can't because my bishop is hanging so... I guess I play bishop d6, then he goes queen c6, mm, and then I go queen g4. But my my pieces feel a little bit loose. I'm slightly concerned about that. Okay, maybe I'll just go f3. Because after queen g4, doesn't feel right to me. Okay, I go f3, no more worries along the long diagonal. And my bishop is of course very nice on d6. My long diagonal here, a7, g1 is a little bit weakened, but it's not of great, great concern to me. All right, let's make sure I'm not blundering anything. This bishop is protected. Um, knight d5, is that an issue? Um, not really. Okay, I need to play some moves, so I go king h1. Not a move I really like that much, but I just want to get out of possible checks and now I just go bishop e5. And this, this knight actually now is in a pin, which I do like. It's a question if I can exploit it. Maybe go bishop b3 and go c4. Um, but of course, black in the meantime can do something about it. Rook c8, yeah, that makes sense to get the rook out of the pin. I could also take on d5. Okay, first I want to get some space for my king because I'm feeling a little bit uneasy. And, okay. Um, let's just see what's happening here. If anything is happening. Uh, maybe something might be happening here. 
Or maybe that was too optimistic. We'll find out. But he has not a lot of time. So I think practically this is a very good try. F6 is the only move. And now he can defend with the rook. Um, and he does. But I'll, I'll grab another pawn. And I already have three pawns with an ongoing attack. Um, so that's nice. Okay. I don't want to exchange rooks. Uh, I'll put some more pressure on the pawn. And now I think I can just take... Yes, looks good. Rook takes e6. He can take with the rook because of checkmate. If we go back one move, if he takes with the queen, I just take back uh, with check. And, well, what else, right? So he takes with the rook and I can checkmate on g7. So I think black ran into some trouble in the opening here, but I can't really pinpoint it. Haven't looked at this variation for a while, so um, can't really say too much about it. But somewhere in the opening, I think black got under pressure. 